ago. His team did not let a 29th place starting position at Darlington stop them from working on that car all day and earning Justin his first top five of the season. So on that note, we say hello to Justin, who joins us here on The Hub. Congrats on that finish. And I do want to ask you about something that you said to Bob Pockers post-race. You told him that you considered the Darlington finish your quote-unquote career high. That's despite, of course, getting that win at Daytona in 2019. So why did this Sunday feel like more, Justin? Uh, I mean, just Darlington's one of those tracks where um, all day you have to fight for it. And and um, me and Trent Owens, my crew chief, the college racing team, we fought all day, right? We probably didn't have a third place car, but um, kept our heads in the game. And, and uh, when you're on top five at Darlington in any series, I feel like you've done something. So it's a good day for us, good building block for a new rookie team. And it's something we can really go back and look on and, and see where we can improve. Don't sell yourself short, man. You finished top five. Not having a top five car, I think you obviously did. I think it was a great performance. Uh, it's interesting to me as I sit back, Justin, and I watch how Chris Rice and your group over there have continued to grow that team. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how you feel the affiliation with RCR. Like, how does that help you? How has that impacted you from a, you know, communication with drivers and the other crew chiefs? How's that working out for you? Yeah, well, obviously it started from the Xfinity Series where we had our RCR Alliance and Richard and everyone. RCR and ECR engines has been awesome over the years. So um, just taking that relationship and, and keeping it through the Cup Series, obviously on RCR's campus. So um, it's been good. We were really good at Dover, and I felt like some of the other cars, RCR cars weren't, and they kind of went to our setups. Same thing with Darlington, and we unloaded, and they were better, so we went to their setups. So just as a new organization, new team, new car, um, we kind of all – get together, lean on each other, um, and figure out what works best for us. Hey, Justin, uh, great job in Darlington, but really, honestly, great job in the last month, man. You, you guys been in a role, and, uh, and as you know, momentum is, is huge in the sport, so uh, I'm sure you guys are going to keep it rolling. But, you know, I wanted to ask you, you know, you are working with one of the best uh, road course guys out there, with AJ. Uh, what have you learned from him, and how he's been able to help you be better, not just in any racetrack, but especially in road course, short tracks, on that kind of stuff that he's known to be very good? I give a lot of credit to AJ, um, not so much just for the road course stuff, but AJ amazes me week in and week out how he can take uh, maybe an average 10th to 15th place car and, and win with it or run top five. AJ every single week maximizes uh, his race, his pit stops, his pit road, restarts, and always gets the most out of his car. So being in the same equipment as him every week and, and just – seeing what he can do with the race car and how he manages the race has really helped me grow um, on just figuring out the mindset for all that. So I think that's probably been the biggest tool that I've uh, learned and, and used from AJ is just the incredible amount of talent and, and hard work and what he brings to the race team. Hey, Justin, speaking of AJ, we've talked about on the show today about some of the great finishes this season, and AJ was part of one of those great finishes at Coda. Of course, last weekend, another great finish with Joey Logano and William Byron, and we've really kind of been talking about just how far guys are willing to go to get a victory. We've seen many examples of it this season. Have you given much thought to what you would be willing to do to get a victory this season and to lock yourself into the playoffs? It just depends on the situation. Um, the situation obviously has to be right. And, and obviously you want to win and dominate a race and, and just win that way. Right. So um, when it comes down to it, every situation is different. Every driver is different and every scenario is different. So um, I try not to think about, you know, all of that too much. I, I just kind of want to focus on the task at hand, what we're accomplishing that day and figuring out what's going to work for us. But obviously when it comes down to it, I think any driver in any situation wants to win more than anything. See how he did that? He, he, he answered the question <laughs> without guy. really answering the question. <laughs> uh, but how about answer this one, right? What would you be willing to do to get the all-star vote, right? Because that closes next week. I know you've been pretty active with trying to get people to vote you in for that all-star fan vote. So you've got a national audience right now. Tell the folks at home why they should vote for Justin Haley. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> I, I feel like there's a lot of competitors out there. I feel like I've never been the most popular, but... Uh, as we've started running well and, and um, finishing better, I feel like my cheers pre-race have gone, gone up. So um, you have to vote me in because my dad, A.J. Allmendinger, 
is already in the race. So allow me to race with my dad for a million dollars. And maybe we'll split it up and he'll uh, take me to uh, an amusement park or something. <laughs> Get you some ice cream. Thank you, Justin. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck this weekend in Kansas. Thank you. I appreciate it.